Have you ever wondered why people want to become an expert? If you look closely at the topic here, uh, you can see many profits. First, uh, experts are often well paid. That's because uh, many, um, many companies, many institutions want to have um, qualified, highly qualified professionals. And the better expert is, the greater fee he or she will get. And what falls after money is, of course, social status. Experts are admired, listened, um, and uh, respected. Uh, many people want to ask them not only about their expertises, but also about advices in many different fields. They often think that expert is someone wise and smart in general, not only in the field of his work. <coughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's a super expert. Okay, um, why this is, oh, okay. Um, but uh, what, what, what else? Of course, uh, the also important thing about um, being an expert is power. Expert, uh, experts, uh, through the advices, influence decision processes. Uh, some politicians, managers, or also even normal people rely so much on prognostics of experts that they base their decision totally on experts' opinion. That's a real power, right? And a real responsibility. And also, the last but not least uh, thing about being an expert is, of course, that experts all, maybe not all experts, but the most of them love what they are doing. They love their jobs. Confucius once said, uh, love what you do and you'll never have to work. Every expert is uh, familiar with that, um, that sentence. But it's really easy to become an expert. Um, how it's happening that you are changing from normal person to an expert? Two great scientists, Christakis and Fowler, I guess something's wrong. Next, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, two great scientists, um, Christakis and Fowler, uh, say that, that uh, they are specialized in uh, social networks, uh, say that you are remote six handshakes from every other person on the planet. So you have to know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows President Obama, uh, Bono, or Danny DeVito. You can start search if you want. Good luck with Danny DeVito, though. Um, <laughs> And what else is important in those social networks is that there are also three uh, degrees of influence, which means that people that you may even don't know, but you may know them as well, uh, can influence what you are eating for breakfast, for example, um, what, what you believe in, or are you jogging at the morning or not? Thanks for that, anyway. Um, so, if the social networks are so powerful, can they, can they create an expert? Well, of course they can. If someone tell other one that you are an expert in something, and that other one person will tell few another, then that we will become in front of other people. And in a time of social media, and media in general, it can be spreading many times faster than it was past few years or decades ago. Why is it so? Why is it happening? Because people simply follow other people. It's easier this way. If we are wondering which toilet is for men and for women, then we will wait for someone of, uh, from our gender, a representative of our gender will uh, get out of uh, the room and we will know that this is probably uh, our place to go. <laughs> Uh, but not only uh, like this, not only we don't only seek, seek information uh, to the behavior of other people, but also we uh, search approval on disapproval of them and we try to uh, be as much, as much conformized, conformed uh, to them uh, uh, as well. So, um, so, other people can influence almost every part of our life. The, we can, our politi political choices, are mostly um, political choices, the places where we eat in, places we want to go for holidays, and so on. Okay, but this is not, uh, this is not making us ex experts, right? So how uh, do you do, what do you have to do to become an expert? How do you want to make such an uh, impression that other people will want to spread it for you and 
make you an expert in some kind of field of yours. Um, I want you uh, to picture such a situation. You are, you are watching a movie uh, in which a medicine doctor is examining a patient. And then he's uh, prescribing an antibiotic for heart disease. In one case, he's saying, just saying that, well, the, you have nothing to lose to the patient. But in other case, uh, he is not so sure that he wants to uh, prescribe this uh, medicine. Uh, and he, is, uh, he checks something in, uh, in books and papers. If you are like a participant in Johnson's and Associates experiment, then you would not trust the second doctor. Is it the situation far from real life? Imagine what you would do if you would meet such a doctor. Probably you will get to another as quick as you can and never get back to this one. Um, why is it so? Is this, do this medicine doctor mm, less untrustworthy than, than, than the other? Well. Um, doctors are experts. There are more of that. There are experts that every one of us have to visit in some part of our lives. We trust them. We rely on them. We really want them to make certain diagnoses and be confident about themselves. But that's, the, not, only the, that's not the only field when we want to be certain. We want to be certain in almost every aspect of our life. We, heard, we hate uncertainty. Our sentence, our sentence makes us uh, feel bad, make neg make, make negative, makes negative um, emotions that we get, want to get rid of as soon as we can. Besides, we love confident people. Confidence communicates strength, communicates wisdom, communicates power. Often in our evolutionary past, uh, confidence was a feature uh, which our leaders has, uh, have. So, so uh, we uh, rely on them till today, right? I want to show you this picture of world leaders. The first one I choose because of recent uh, events in Vatican when there was change in Pope's office. But new Pope is still a mystery to the world, uh, so let's focus on, on the recent ones. Um, we have John Paul II and Benedict XVI. First was self-confident, and a um, strong person. When he was walking to, for a balcony for his announcement uh, after he was elected, um, one of cardinals said that he never saw something like, he never seen something like that. Uh, he was so strong, so majestic. And his body language said that in many times when we uh, could, see, uh, could see him, uh, he was often smile, he has a smile on his face, uh, he never masked this, this emotion, he really uh, was, this was the attitudes for, attitude for a um, confident person. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, Benedict XVI, his successor, who when he was elected uh, said that he is just a modest worker of Lord's Vineyard. Well, I thought that maybe he likes wine, but I'm an atheist. Uh, so, what do I know? Uh, no, <laughs> of course, the modest was uh, something that was really expression of his attitude. He was not only modest, but also shy. He was unconfident. He was also a um, person who was slow and quiet. Uh, his fas facial expression shown often masked emotions of fear, anxiety, um, and uncertainty. Of course, Catholics love them both, but still the role model of Pope is John Paul II. OK, second picture, it's two candidates uh, for president's office in 2008. We know that uh, now that Obama get out of this duel uh, at, as, as president of the United States, which is now running his second term. Um, Obama was certain of his words. He was very confident of what he said. He believed in every single word that he uh, was saying through the campaign. Uh, but McCain wasn't so sure, and that's, what, that, that's why also maybe he lost this running. And in second, that in third, uh, we have uh, two uh, presidents of Russia, recent and former. Well, we can say we have two former presidents, but I don't want to insult Vladimir Putin. I mean, you've seen Litvinenko, right? So I will now only speak uh, good about Mr. President. Uh, President Putin is exa an example of so-called alpha male. 
he is not only strong and confident, but also intelligent, active, and efficient in what he is doing. Uh, Dmitry Medvedev doesn't have such uh, features, and so he also uh, were, were not evaluated as well as Putin when he was leaving the office. Confidence is a part of uh, is an attitude that is a part of so-called charisma. Some leaders have charisma and some don't, uh, but everyone wants to have. But confidence also is something that we expect from experts. We trust that expert is someone who knows what he is doing, who can, who had to be certain of his words and confident about, about um, his expertises. And what is a good news that 16% of, uh, of confidence can be learned. Uh, six, uh, six, about more than 60%. Uh, 16 to 34% is, uh, we succeed genetically. So we can all be, uh, start to learn confidence and then we will, people, other people will follow us. But there's a catch. There's a catch. Uh, in a study of Rafael Omer and his associates, uh, they put micro expression of fear into uh, the movie uh, when in which uh, a doctor was ensuring a patient that she should not be afraid of anything, she, have to, she has to be optimistic and uh, just stay in hospital for a few, few days. Micro expressions are facial, uh, emo emotion of, uh, facial expressions, uh, facial exp emotion uh, um, expressions, which uh, appears for so short period of time that normally without special trainings people can see them. Also, the uh, participants of the experiment they didn't see um, those micro expressions, but when they were asked about uh, is a patient uh, sad or happy, uh, then they, ask, they, they say that, the, that the, the patient is rather sad than, than happy. And also, when they, uh, ask, when they were asked about is the patient ill or healthy, more of them said, uh, that they are, uh, that they are, um, that she is rather um, ill than, than healthy. In uh, compared to neutral uh, group, uh, control group, that doesn't so the, the doesn't see the emotion of, uh, of fear or, or micro expression of fear. So we cannot see micro expressions consciously, but our brain registered them, and so. Um, we can trust somebody or not based on our intuition. And this intuition often is uh, some voice of our subconscious mind. So it's better not to fake that you are uh, confident, let us try really to learn about it. But okay, uh, let's back to the, the, our doctor's situation from the Johnson's and Associates experiment. Um, is the doctor, uh, confident doctor, really a better expert than this, do, this one who uh, wanted to check that he is not wrong and uh, not trying to be not, ra not too rash uh, f in his diagnosis? Of course not. The second one is more self-aware, more conscious, and more experienced uh, medicine doctor because he knows that he could be easily mistaken. The confident diagnosis aren't best diagnosis. They are risky. In the movie uh, of, of Catherine Bigelow, the latest movie, Zero Dark Thirty, they have, we have a main character, Maya, uh, which when, he's, when she's asked about uh, is Osama Bin Laden in this specific place, uh, in a specific house, in exact, exact house in uh, Pakistan, she is confident for 100%. Highly, uh, ex highly mm, of high, high officers, uh, of her, uh, her, her superiors aren't so sure, but she is. Of course, this is not documentary, this is just a movie. In real life, uh, the executives in, in White House uh, weren't sure till the end of the story almost uh, that there is really Osama bin Laden in this place or not. The more of that, they were very afraid what will happen if they won't find bin Laden or any other important terrorist. The world would not approve such a um, such a behave of, of um, America, um, America's military forces. Uh, but, that, but that's how the real expertise works. The more wisdom we have, 
the less confident we are about our judgments, because we know that there are many factors working, and we cannot be certain that something is for 100% sure. We only can estimate probability and try to make it, of course, as highest as, uh, as, as is possible. I want to show you now uh, some movie. In this movie, two people want to break to some place. Take a closer look. <laughs> well, at first we can say they're rather stupid, right? But what most important is, this is a perfect ex example of how uh, overconfidence works. Uh, they were sure that they can do this, right? They even don't think that there is a camera somewhere or, or that, the, the, that the glass won't resist, uh, will resist the, 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 the break. But what's, what, what's mo most important, he, they didn't hit the, the, one per the person that uh, threw the break, wasn't even uh, sure of, of what happened um, after he threw the first break, right? He still wanted to do that again. Uh, Einstein once said that uh, the insanity is, uh, uh, um, has a, uh, is a statement when, when or behavior uh, when uh, someone is doing uh, the same thing all over again and expect different results. Where maybe they were insane. But the most important thing is that they were overconfident at what they're doing. Uh, and let's talk about... Um, yeah. <laughs> let's talk about uh, chess for a second. Uh, chess, um, chess players has a, uh, one of the best rankings in the world because the, it, it, is, it shows the accurate position. Uh, so um, this is this is very important because this position can be uh, the same through many years, and, and this is really uh, it really shows the real uh, skills of skills of uh, of ch such a chess player. And so Simons and Habris uh, took an experiment when they asked chess players, are they, um, are they, uh, what is their, 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 their rank and uh, what it should be. Most of the chess players feel, felt underestimated about uh, their, their position. But what's more important is that the especially underestimated were, were those who were in lower parts of the ranking and not the upper ones. The upper ones was more, were more conf confident uh, and more uh, self-aware uh, and aware of their skills than the ones that were in, in the lower uh, places in, the, in this rank. But so, but we, we on the, the one hand, we have an expert, a real expert, that he's not so confident about their, uh, their opinions. And in the second hand, we have someone that is confident, but maybe he's not a real expert. But he could be also a real expert. But that's not what people expected from real uh, experts. They don't want people who say that maybe it will happen. They want people who will say to them, this will happen. Journalists, politicians, managers, they don't, they, they don't expect from us to be uncertain and not confident. And this is a real, uh, this is something that is not so easy to, you know, to get by, to go by with because because if we now want to be an expert, then we have to make certain, sta uh, certain statements. Those statements can also uh, turn, make us experts no more, because if we are wrong, then our opinions can make us, um, can, can easily get, uh, get us rid of, of, of opinion of an expert. But if we are right, then we will be glorified, of course. But how many times we can be right? So, in, other, in one hand, we can be uh, more sure, confident, and try to risk in our opinions. And in other hand, we can be um, more careful, more, more, more careful with our prognostics and not try to, um, not try to expand them so, so confident. Uh, but, in the other hand, people may know not about, may, may not ever know about we existing even, because uh, those opinions will be all, 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 all always in our minds, in our uh, conscious, but not in the conscious of other people. So uh, in this, 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 this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>